To round out our discussion about the state space control system, we want to finally then introduce the idea of negative feedback. Negative feedback is a fundamentally useful tool in the management of control systems because oftentimes the state matrix A, right, that relates that controls the stability of the system as we saw in the previous video is outside of the ability of the engineers to control, at least to, to a large degree. However, the feedback of the system when, it's per, when you're passing negative feedback into it is within the control, is usually within the control of the engineers. And we will see that negative feedback gives us control over the system to push an otherwise potentially uncontrollable or unstable system into one that is controllable and is stable. So let's see how that works. To do so, we need to recreate our diagram of control. And so let's just do so quickly. This is going to be you, this is the plus, plus, this is going to be x dot, this is going to be the integral, this is going to be c, here's going to be u, uh, we are going to tap this guy, pass it back, pass this back, I believe we're done. Yeah, let's fill this all in now. So it's got our vectors and our, and our signals, so this is going to be u of t. This is going to be x dot of t. This is going to be, no, is that x dot of t? No, that is not x dot of t. That is the output bu. This is x dot of t on this side. This is going to be x of t. This is going to be, I'm missing a, am I missing a plus somewhere? Uh, we're not doing a, feed forward matrix here. No, I'm not missing a plus. So this is going to be Y of T. And this is going to be X. Yep, that's all correct. So now let's fill in our matrices. This is going to be B. This is going to be A. This is going to be C. We're not doing D here, so I've, I've tossed it out. And this is going to be our integral, DT. Oops, it's not a good looking integral. which can also be represented as one over S in the Laplace domain. All right, so this is our diagram. And when you add negative feedback, what you are doing is classically, you are grabbing, I'll do this with a different color. You're grabbing the output Y of T and you are going to be feeding it into a new matrix that we'll define in a second. And you're going to take the output of the, you're going to take the output signal, Y of T, multiplied by this matrix, and you're going to feed it back in as your control signal. And so this is going to equal U of T. And this year I ended up with a feedback loop. And this matrix, is usually called K. And typically, as engineers, we have control over K. And so now let's write the actual equations in the time domain that describe this. So you now have X dot of T is going to be equal to this A of X, right? A of X. So we still have A. Let's do it with the colors. Why not? So in green, we've got X dot of T. We're going to say that's going to be equal to A times X of T. Now we're going to add that to Instead of, and now U is getting overwritten. We don't have a U anymore. What we now have is K times Y of T. 
And so we have that plus k times y of t because k times y of t is equal to u of t. In, in, the class, in this classical diagram of feedback, and you could have picked any other way to do it, right? You could, have put, you could have put k and put it here and added the sum. That would have changed the equations, but this is one way of representing feedback. So keep in mind here that u of t is equal to k. We'll keep it in the colors that we're playing with. k times y of t. k, y of t, oh, I forgot to multiply by b. Ah, hang on. So this isn't entirely correct. I forgot one matrix here. So this is b times k, y of t. Because multiply y, right, it's ky, and then it gets multiplied by b, so it's bky of t, that then gets added into ax of t to get x dot of t. Now, going back here, we've got y of t is equal to, well, what's y of t? It's equal to c times x of t. So that looks, doesn't look like it's changed. c times x of t. All right, so now we have now we have our equations. Because of this loop, because of this loop property, the control system the transfer function of the control system becomes changed. I'm not gonna walk through the math for this, but the key point to understand here is if you were to look and try to solve, and I would recommend that you do this in the Laplace domain because otherwise it's very difficult. But if you tried to solve for y of s over x of s, to get you the transfer function. You will see that it's no longer solely dependent on A. It's now dependent on something else, something more. This K is having an impact on the stability of the control system. And because K is something that we can often tune and control, incredibly useful. So this is the purpose of negative feedback. It allows us to manipulate the control system representation and the control system itself so that in the case where we're dealing with an unstable A by itself, where the eigenvalues, at least one of the eigenvalues is greater than greater, a real part of one side, the, re the, real, uh, the real part of at least one of the eigenvalues is greater than zero, then K can help us manipulate that. And so that we can push all of the eigenvalues of the transfer function, right? All of the eigenvalues of the, all of the, all of the poles of the transfer function, right? Things on the bottom of the denominator back into being, back into having negative real components. Solving that is just a bit of math. And I invite you to do that because it will give you insight into how K can be chosen to create stable systems or guarantee stability when you have little control, for example, over A.